Oh, it's Christmas time, and I gotta eat my chocolate from my advent calendar. Oh, I'm a day behind. Shit, hang on. We're gonna take that out. We're gonna eat it. And then we're gonna eat today's one, because I missed it. Oh, look, it, it's Santa. You can't see it. Can you, c camera, please. Please. That's not gonna do it. Fine. Santa Claus. All right, done with it. Let's do some music. Hello, Internet. This is Olin from What I'm Listening To. It is, once again, Christmas time. It's the time to be with your family, give them gifts, laugh, have fun, enjoy yourself, and all the sappy stuff in between. Last year, I had done a vlog showing off albums that were holiday themed, as well as some albums that I just associated with Christmas time and listened to whenever the holidays came about. In the same vein of running to your tree on Christmas Day in order to open all of your presents, I have here a bag full of packages and stuff that I ordered throughout the month, and I've been saving them all for this very vlog, which has been really difficult because there's some great stuff in here that I've been really, really wanting to open, but I just, I had to have something for this video. So now that I know that everything has arrived, we're gonna open them up right here, right now. Let's do this. I had to spend a little bit of time scribbling out my address so nobody could find where I live. No stalkers, please. So to start things off, we're gonna start with this package. Got my trusty pair of scissors to assist me with the package opening. Let's hope I don't open a part of my body and bleed all over the place, because that would be tragic. <laughs> there we go. Clean cut. All right, here we go. Cloudland Canyon. This band is fantastic. Back when I was really, really getting into experimental music, I was on the constant hunt for something new and interesting, more so than I am now. I specifically was really into the label Cranky, which I've talked numerous times about. And while I was looking through their roster, I happened to stumble upon this band name, and I was curious. So I looked them up and found this album. This may not be their first album in their discography, but it's the first album of theirs that I ever got into. Listening to the very first track on here, No One Else Around, I was blown away. To me, it sounded like if shoegaze music was made in the 70s. It was really atmospheric and melodic and sugary sweet, but also really noisy at the same time. just that song that sounds like this, the rest of the album is equally just as great. I've been listening to this album on and off for years now, and it wasn't until recently when I was re-listening to it when I thought I should get a copy of it for my CD collection. So here I have it, this is their album, Finn Eves, I'm really hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's fantastic, it's got an equally fantastic cover here. Absolutely worth checking this out if you are a fan of shoegaze and or psychedelic music. This is awesome. <laughs> Next package I have here, we'll do this one. Every time I cut these things, I'm always scared I'm gonna cut the CD or damage it in some way, so I'm just I'm just so scared. What do we got in here? Oh, perfect! I have yet another Cloudland Canyon album. While that last album I showed may have been my first album that I listened to by the band, this album is the first album in their discography. Because I bought that last album, I figured I should check out some of their other material because they have, I think, four or five albums in their discography. I sampled through their other albums a little bit just to see if there was something that jumped out at me immediately. And I found myself gravitating towards this album mostly because the cover just looked so 
ominous and kind of spooky looking. And when I sampled the songs, I found that they were a lot more raw and far more experimental than the material on that other album. <laughs> Considering that this is their first album, I'm sure this is where they're just trying to get their foot in the door, trying to find themselves and establish their sound as a band. But overall, I have no idea what to expect from this one, and that's mostly why I bought it. And look at this artwork, this is so trippy and psychedelic looking. It's definitely a lot more different than the main cover itself. This is looking a lot more abstract. I'm really excited to sit down with it and get to know it. I should probably get some of their other stuff just to complete the discography. But until then, I'm gonna be listening to this one. <laughs> album I'll be opening up today comes from this big box. I don't know why this is packaged in such a large box. I'm pretty sure it's just a CD in here, but we'll find out in a sec. Come on, there we go. All right, let's try not to cut off a finger here. I'm gonna need that. Jesus Christ, they really secured this one here. This is gonna be a while. Snip, snip. Snip. I think that's enough, maybe. We'll see. Yeah, it is. Oh, now the other side's being a pain in the ass. <sighs> Gonna get the scissors again. Snip. Snip. Okay. This is this is so unnecessary. Oh my god. Okay, before I even unpack this, look at this. This was in here. Person who packaged this. This is a little excessive. I think just a standard yellow envelope would have been fine. Well, let's see what's in here. They really wanted to make sure this got here in one piece. What's it gonna be? Ah, yes. Shabazz Palaces. As soon as I win, let's run it back. I run on feelings, fuck your backs. Deception is the truest act. With poise, I twirl the bluest slack. Dougie hold the ooh sacks. I dance and move to play the back. I dip, she asked him, who was that? I ain't show up, I just showed up. In the beginning of the month, I went through a little bit of a hip hop kick. Specifically, I was looking for experimental hip hop. The only experimental hip hop groups I really knew about were Clipping and the Death Grips. But I didn't really know much else. So I did a little research online and discovered a couple other groups. Dialect was one of them, and these guys were the others. I wanted to get this album first because it's the first album in their discography. So I went to Amoeba and bought what I thought was their first album, but as it turned out, it was their second album. Nonetheless, I listened to it and enjoyed it. And I want to say on the same day I bought that album, I went home, went on Discogs, and bought this one. These guys are fantastic. They're not nearly as abrasive or noisy as Death Grips or Clipping, but they're certainly really, really weird. What makes them so experimental is they're basically playing with the idea and the formula and productions of hip-hop music. There's rapping, there's a flow, there's a beat, like rap music should have, but all the other sounds that go into it are just so strange and not rap or hip-hop at all. This album was also put out by Sub Pop, which is kind of strange to me because whenever I see Sub Pop's name, I always just associate them with Mud Honey and Nirvana and just alternative rock or grunge bands. But they also did put out Clippings albums, so I'm guessing they're just trying to diversify themselves and release other weird things. I also want to point out the packaging for this is so strange. It's clean and sleek, but it's so unique. This cover is made out of, I think it's felt, I'm not sure. That might explain the excessive packing the seller did for this, who knows. This should be a phenomenal listen. I'm excited to experience this one. I loved the second album, so I'm sure I'll dig this one. Once you know that it come back slow, it go out fast, but it come back slow. Nigga, mind how you go, keep your swerve in control, cause it go out fast, but it come back slow. The next album I have here 
we'll go with this package. This one looks especially sealed, so I'm gonna need scissors for it. Steady, 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 boosh. That's all I need, one incision and we're good. What's it gonna be? Ooh, all right. So I have here pyramids. this band quite recently and like the other albums I've talked about on the vlog I was immediately enamored by the album cover looking at it it looks like a psychedelic or a shoegaze album or both and as it turns out that is true but it's a lot more things as well it's shoegaze it's psychedelic it's noise it's black metal it's all over the place they're kind of in the same vein as Cloudland Canyon, although Cloudland Canyon is a much more uplifting sounding band, these guys are far more dynamic. There's some shoegazy songs, but there's also some really heavy, gritty black metal songs, and then there's some ambient, dream pop influenced songs. But it all works together as one cohesive piece, and it's amazing. I listened to this album in its entirety on the band's band camp and was immediately hooked. They have a couple of other records out which have some really cool covers, but this one to me is their best, and it's their first album in their discography. If any of the descriptors I mentioned for this album sound interesting to you, then definitely, definitely check it out. It's fantastic, great cover, and great sound overall. <laughs> The next album I have for you today comes from this Amazon Prime packaging. I find it a little unnecessary that they put such a small CD in this massive packaging. I can feel the CD is literally right here, but they felt the need to engulf it in a giant envelope. What's going on with the packaging, people? Jeez. Ah yes, I'm excited about this one. I have here... Swan's Soundtracks for the Blind. Swan's is one of those bands that I really, really, really want to like, and have listened to a lot of their material, but for whatever reason, none of it just really grabbed me. Not to say that I didn't like it, I enjoyed what I heard, but I wasn't as crazy about it as I was hoping to be. When I first discovered this album, I was told that it was one of the prime influencers of first wave post-rock music. So I was expecting something more rock-oriented, a la Mogwai or any of those other bands from that time. I bought the album on their band camp because I really wanted to support them, and when I put it on, I was really confused. The stuff I heard was far more experimental than it was rock oriented, which I was not expecting at all. I wouldn't say I didn't like the material, but because I was expecting one thing, I wasn't really into it at the time. I only listened to the first couple of tracks and then eventually just ditched it because I was like, you know, this is this is too much for me. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to just get away from it for now. However, in the recent days, now that I love experimental music, I decided on a whim to re-listen to the album and see what I thought of it. And holy shit, it's fucking amazing. I loved the spooky atmospheres, the weird electronics, the strange voices, the recordings of people being interviewed, which I'm assuming are archived stuff that Michael Jira just got his hands on, I'm not entirely sure. And just everything that went into the album. It's fantastic. And it's a long fucking album too. It's like two hours long, all spread onto two discs. So if you are gonna listen to this, be prepared because when you finish listening, it's it's a lot, but I'm excited about this particular edition because this is actually a reissue that came out this year. The entire album is remastered 
And it features a third disc, which is a companion album. I think it came out prior to this album's release, containing some alternate mixes of stuff, some live recordings, and some B-sides. I gotta open this up and see what the interior packaging looks like, because this just looks beautiful. Young God Records always was really good at packaging stuff. Look at that. Look at it. So cool. This is the, that's the back. Here's the front. All three discs and a nifty little booklet. Let's see what's inside. Oh, it's not much. It's just some some more abstract looking artwork. Still cool nonetheless. And tons and tons of words. Words and liner notes. Just so much stuff. But yeah, anyways, I am so excited to have this in my collection. This is a fantastic album. I think now that I'm into this album, it's a good time to go explore Swan's other albums and hopefully something will stick so I can just say, hey, I love the Swans, not just, nah, they're all right. But until then, I will be enjoying this one. <laughs> Next album I have today, let's do this package. I don't even think I'm gonna need scissors for this one. I think I just tear this one right open. I love when packaging is semi easy and not too secured. When it's too secured, it's frustrating as fuck, but when I can just get it open, nothing. Oh yes, this is awesome. I have here music for the firewalkers. <laughs> In another vlog I made a while ago, I believe it was one of my all vinyl vlogs, I talked extensively about this record. I won't go into nearly as much detail now, and I'll just say if you want to know more, go watch that video, listen to me talk about it, and come back here. But to give a little bit of an abridged background of what's on the CD, essentially these recordings were taken sometime in the 70s in small villages in Greece. In those villages, they perform an old ritual in which people dance and play music and heat up these rocks, which the people will then hold up offerings in the air while dancing on the rocks. And if the ritual is done correctly, then the people will walk away from those hot rocks completely unharmed. I first discovered this album about a year ago and immediately fell in love with it. It was during that time when I was taking an interest into field recordings, not necessarily getting crazy into them, but hearing about them and trying to figure out what kind of stuff was out there in that realm. So I stumbled across this record and was immediately interested by looking at the cover. When I saw it, I thought this was going to be some dark, ambient, spooky sounding album. And when I heard it, I was actually pleasantly surprised by what kind of music was played on here. Because it's technically a field recording album, the quality of the recordings aren't really the greatest, but to me, that makes them so much more authentic. And it really puts you right there in that environment as if you're a part of that ritual. So there's a handful of recordings that are actual songs being performed by the people, and there are other recordings of people just talking to one another. The cool thing is, is you can actually get this album on Bandcamp for free, which I'll leave a link to down in the description so you can check it out and download it if you're interested. But obviously that wasn't enough for me, and I sought out physical copies of the album because I really wanted to own something. At first, I thought you could only get this album on vinyl, which I have and is actually hanging on my wall right now. It makes for really good wall art. That's it. Right there. Look at it, it's awesome. And there's some also cool stuff I have here on my wall. 
then I saw that they actually pressed some CDR copies of it, and I just couldn't help myself. I love CDs, I have a lot of CDs, and I love this album, so I bought it. So I'm really excited to have a proper CD version of it. This just looks so cool. I'm gonna be taking great care of this album. Definitely check this out if you're interested in folk music or even just field recordings in general. It's certainly a treat. <laughs> The last album I have for you today is gonna be in this box. Okay, this one is gonna be a little more challenging because it's sealed up quite well. I don't know if one incision is gonna work. We'll see. Maybe my my brute strength <laughs> will be able to open it. Oh, I can see it. I can see the package. <sighs> ah, yes, of course. Buckethead. I've definitely talked about Buckethead in previous videos. This album is my very first full-length Buckethead album I ever listened to. On some video I saw years and years and years ago, I don't even know if it exists, but if it does, I probably will link it in the video here. The video was a custom-made Guitar Hero song showing off some ridiculously difficult chart, and they used the song Final Wars to play while you did the chart so you weren't just playing to nothing. And once I heard that song, I wanted this album. But it was also during this time that I had no clue about Discogs or Amoeba or any record stores for that matter. And I had no idea how to go about getting the album, not unless it was on Amazon, which it wasn't. So I settled for buying a digital copy of it on iTunes and had been listening to it since. Eventually, I stumbled across a copy of this album at Amoeba, and they were selling it for $50. Although I love this album, there was no fucking way I was dropping $50 for this album. So I held off on buying it that time and thought nothing of it. A year goes by, I'm browsing on Discogs, and I just on a whim decide to search for this album to see how much people were selling it for. And I found a copy that was being sold for, I think it was like $20, which is such a bargain compared to 50. The only catch is the packaging has a little bit of water damage. It looks like somebody may have spilled some water or liquid on it and it's dried up, but it doesn't look too bad. The disc is in good shape and that's honestly all that matters to me. The material on this album is definitely much more experimental metal oriented than some of the other stuff I've heard. Here he plays with a myriad of different genres such as just general heavy metal, some hip-hop, some funk, some post-metal, all kinds of stuff. And the interesting thing about the album is it's pretty straightforward. It's just drums, guitar, and a bass, maybe some vocal samples here and there, but for the most part, it's all instrumental. To be honest, I'm pretty convinced Buckethead just made this album by himself. He just got GarageBand to play the rhythm stuff, and he recorded all the guitar stuff by himself. Let's see what the liner notes have to say. Music by Buckethead and Delray Brewer, produced by that guy, recorded by that guy. Does it have anything else? Nope, it's just a card. So it doesn't look like it. Who knows, maybe it was just him. I, I have no idea. So I'm thrilled to have a copy of this. This is easily my favorite Buckethead album. It's fantastic. And if you're looking to start somewhere with Buckethead's music, I highly recommend doing this one. And then go check out Electric Tears and Coma and Electric Sea. Those are more mellow stuff, but fantastic nonetheless. This is gonna be a valuable addition to my collection. Alrighty then, internet, that does it for me. Hey, if you have any bands or albums you want me to check out, leave a comment down below, and if I like it, maybe I'll include it in another vlog. Also, if you like this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button. 
It'll show me the support, and I'll love your face for it. And you can also follow me on Instagram for even more music. I post a new album on there every single day, talk a little bit about them, and it gives you a bit of an insight of what else is in my collection. So, thank you all very much for watching. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year, Happy whatever holiday you're celebrating, just Happy Holidays in general. Have a great day. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Winter